Hey, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of Boss Tip Thursday, where I share weekly videos and tips to help you get stuff done. And today, it's all about YouTube thumbnails. I've come a long way since I first got started on YouTube. Almost a hundred videos later, I think I'm starting to get the hang of this thumbnail thing. And today I'm going to be sharing with you my tips and tricks, how I create YouTube thumbnails using PicMonkey and Canva. So let's jump right in. The first step is going to be to edit your picture using PicMonkey. Unfortunately, the PicMonkey software on the computer is no longer free. You have to pay the monthly fee every month if you want to export your pictures from PicMonkey onto your desktop, which is what we all want to do because we want to use the pictures we edit. But I already pay for Canvas premium stuff. I didn't want to be paying for two different platforms and I use Canva more than I use PicMonkey. So the work around that is a PicMonkey app on my phone. The app itself is free. You only pay $3.99 if you want all these extra little features, but I think it's worth it. And today I'm going to be showing you how I use it. The strangest thing was happening though when I was recording my phone screen. That's how I normally do these tutorials. I record my phone screen, but every time I would click on PicMonkey and start editing my picture, it would just get corrupted. The whole file just went dark. So I'm going to have to turn this camera onto my phone to show you how to use this PicMonkey app and I hope that it works out. I hope you can still follow along but if you happen to have any questions just leave it in the comments below. So with all that being said let's jump into the PicMonkey app tutorial. I hope you can see everything I'm doing. All right, so now I'm going to choose a picture to edit. I'll go ahead and pick this old picture for a thumbnail I took long ago. After that, we're gonna go ahead and click this pencil icon down at the bottom that says edit. Then PicMonkey will take us to all these neat little options that it has. The first one is the crop option, which is fairly obvious. Just if you wanna crop something out of your picture, if you wanna rotate your picture, Click the check mark to apply or click the X. The next option is adjust. Here's where you'll see all your shadows, your highlights, contrast, brightness, saturation, or if you wanna blur stuff out, this is where you would go as well. And the neat thing about this is that you can apply any of these effects to your entire picture or just to certain spots. For example, if I wanted to try out this brightness, I can, move this little slider left to make it darker or right to make it brighter. Or I could also choose this paintbrush and paint what I want bright. If I just want my background to be super bright and I want myself to stay the same, then I would just paint all around this background and leave myself the same. So that's the neat thing about it. You can apply it to certain things, not the whole picture. So I'm gonna go ahead and click X on this and show you the next little neat feature, which is effects. Effects are like filters and they have so many options here. I'll go ahead and try out this uh, second one here, Pink Fog. As you see, it did it on my whole picture and just like the other adjust feature, you can apply it to the whole picture or you can apply it to just certain areas. I can take the paintbrush and paint my background. Another thing I could do is take this eraser and erase myself out of this filter instead, which just makes it a lot easier and a lot faster. The next option is touch-ups. This is one of the features that you have to pay $3.99 for. I don't think I clarified this before, but the $3.99 is a one-time payment. It's not a monthly fee like it would be with the software on your computer. So this is one of the things you'd have to pay for. I went ahead and got it. I think it's worth it. Depending on how my picture looked or came out, I may need some of these things. They have smooth skin, they have blemish fix, teeth whitening, eye brightening, nip tuck. So for the most part, I just come on here and do this presto option 
which just instantly clarifies the whole picture for you. So that's what I use. I'll go ahead and X out of that. This T here is for text. Now I'll be very honest with you, I don't use this texting at all. I just don't like the way that it translates when you upload it to YouTube. It doesn't look very well. So I use Canva for that. That's the reason that I use these two different softwares. So if you ever wanted to add text for any reason, that's where you'd find it. The next option is draw. With draw, you can start to get fancy with your backgrounds. You can choose any color and you can draw your whole background this color and just draw around yourself and make your background, your thumbnail stand out on YouTube. You can switch up colors, do all these different sort of colors. Or what you could also do is add a brand color. If you slide all the way over, you'll see this little wheel here. You move the slider on the top and the slider at the bottom until you come up with your perfect brand color. Or if you have a hex code of your brand color, you can come here to hex and add it there and then just go ahead and color your background. Um, another neat thing with this color thing, I'll go ahead and color this side to show you, is this opacity um, feature. You can use the slider to make it darker or brighter once you color in your whole background. So I'm gonna go ahead and X out of that and go on to the final thing, which is stickers. So stickers is um, just things that PicMonkey has. It has all sorts of things. It even has emojis that you can add to your thumbnails, shapes, symbols, and this hub thing is for you to save your picture to the PicMonkey platform. If you save it to the PicMonkey platform, you can edit it again once you're done and you need to make some changes. You can go back and edit it. Whereas if you save it to your phone, you can't edit anything on it. You'd have to start all over. But this is in the monthly fee, so just skip over that for now. The next uh, thing here is photos. This is what I really like. You can add a photo on top of the photo you're editing. So if I wanted to add this sparkly background, just stretch it out to fit the entire picture. And then down here you have some neat options. You can erase part of the background. You can make the opacity a little less bright by hitting the slider button here. Then I can see myself and I can click this erase button and erase myself out of this background which will leave me with just a shiny background which looks neat, it looks unique and it stands out on YouTube which is what it's all about, making thumbnails that stand out. So yes, that's the essence of this PicMonkey app. As you see, it's fairly easy to use. I normally just come on here, take a couple of minutes to edit my picture and then upload it to Canva. So I'll show you real quick what I do. First, I come to this adjust. I go to saturation. I click the paintbrush, turn it all the way up and I color in my shirt to make it stand out, to make it bright, or anything else in my background that has color, I'll go ahead and color it in with saturation. It looks like it doesn't make that much of a difference, but when you compare the picture side by side, it really does, it makes the color stand out. The next thing I'll do is brighten it up a little bit if it needs it, just a tiny bit. And other than that, that's all for adjust. In effects, normally, I go for a tint. They have a pink, a purple, or a blue. And as you know, here you can mess with the intensity of it. I'm gonna go for a full-on intense purple. Take the perp or, or the eraser and take the filter off of me so that it could just be on my background. And as you see right here, I went overboard. I erased too much of the filter, so I'm just gonna go ahead and color it back in. So there you go, it could be a little more perfect, but I just wanna quickly show you what I do. I'm gonna click the check mark here, and oh yeah, on touch-ups, I just go here for the Presto, click the check mark, and that's basically all I do. After that, just click save, and I share it to either my email or my Evernote account. That way it's available on my 
desktop and I can just download it to add the text on Canva. So let's go over and do that now. Okay, so here is the picture that I uploaded onto Evernote. I'm just gonna click this download button here and then I can go over to canva.com and create my thumbnail. I'm not showing everything from the very beginning because I have tons of tutorials already on how to create thumbnails and ebooks and so many other things with Canva. So I will leave all those tutorials linked down below. But right now I just wanna show you how I got to this point so you can kind of have an idea what you can do with Canva. So for now I'm going to upload the photo I downloaded from Evernote. Just click and drag here and my picture will upload. Then we'll drag it over and adjust it. So basically these two pictures are the same except this one has the purple background but I'm going to create the same effect, the same letters and elements just to show you how we get to that point. So lately I've been doing lots of squares with letters on top. I tend to change my thumbnail method every now and then but for right now this is what I'm doing so I'll just grab a box from here from the elements I go to shapes and I grab this box and again if you want to learn more about the sidebar everything that's available here and how you can use this make sure to watch some more of my tutorials I'm going to click this color to change it to yellow and make it a little bit smaller and I'm gonna click this minus sign in this bottom right hand corner just so I'm able to see the both of them together so I can know what I'm doing and make it exactly like the one on top. And then from there, we'll go ahead and add the text. So for text, just click this T over here, click add heading, and we'll change this to all capitals, video routine. Once I see this two headed arrow, I'll go ahead and drag it to make it all one line. I'm going to make it bold and the font that I like to use is called League Spartan just because it's bold and it shows on a small thumbnail which is what I really want. And then I'll go ahead and up the size normally about a 55 will do. Go ahead and stretch it out once more. Okay there we go that's perfect. I'm going to arrange this text towards the back so that I can stretch out this rectangle so that it fits perfectly great now arrange it back to the back again and there we go video routine so it's not perfectly aligned but you get the gist of it and then here I just search up whatever I think would look good so for this I just search up play button and I go to illustrations since I can't find the exact shape that I use here, this yellow and pink shape, I'm just going to go ahead and drag this one over and use this for now. And then up here, we can go ahead and change the color. So I'll change this main blue color to this brand pink color. And then the other darker color will do the same thing. And I'll scoot this over while I see what I do with it. For now, I'll click this video routine and copy this text. And I guess I can go ahead and make this big so that you can see exactly what I'm doing now. And we're going to go ahead and change this text. Then I'll just put this element a little bit bigger and kind of slanted here. And that's what we'll go with. The final step would be to name your thumbnail here and then go ahead and download it. Normally a PNG is good. You can also do a JPEG. And for right now, I only want page number two, not page number one. Go ahead and download it. And we're done. I really hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, let me know by hitting that thumbs up. That lets me know what kind of videos to make in the future. And make sure to hit that share button down below and send this video over to a friend who may need it. You'll be helping them and you'll be supporting this channel as well. If you have any requests for future tutorials in another Boss Tip Thursday episode, Leave that in the comments down below. If you have any questions or any other recommendations for apps that make YouTube thumbnails, let us know in the comments below. And that's all for today. I thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.